and welcome back to this new episode about ASP.NET Core. In the previous episode we saw oh, the new structure of ASP.NET Core and how to manage static files. In this one we are going to see how to use the logger and the logger factory and the different how to do for loggers. Okay. This one is the startup class created with the empty template of a ASP.NET Core using Visual Studio 2015. As you can see here, we already have some information about the log. It's because with the template is the template already installed the Microsoft Extensions Logging Console. This class, this package, sorry, is used here with this extension method. And basically it is saying to add the console output to all the information that are logged. If I run the application using Kestrel, I can see some information here in the log. If I refresh the page, I have a request, the time I use it to, for the request, and so on. Okay, and hold the information logged as info. I can add all the output. For example, if I'm running my application on Visual Studio or on Information Service IIS, I don't have to use console. And it could be, better, could be better to use something more useful. For example, I can go on NuGet and search here Microsoft.Extensions.Logging and here we go, we have different output. For example, we have the bug and we can install it because we are going to use it soon. We have the trace source, the event log, Slack that is created by me, the another event source, Azure App Service, and so on. Of course, you, you can create your own logger if you prefer. Okay, I just installed Microsoft.extension.login.debug. How can I use it? It's pretty simple. I can go here to my configure method and type logger factory dot add debug. If I run my application again, and I refresh, I still have log in the, the console application, but also into the output windows in Visual Studio. So I have two different output with the the same logger, that's pretty cool. But how to add some custom information to the logger? If I want to log here, for example, in the startup class, I have to create a logger for the startup class. To do that is enough to move the iLogger factory from the configure method into a private field. Private with only logger factory. Create a constructor start up that with the dependence on the logger factory this dot log factory is equal to log, logger factory okay and now thanks to the logger factory I can create my own logger here private read only I logger of startup why I have to specify startup into the logger is because the logger needs to know who is logging the information. Okay, because we could have different method with the same name but in different class. Text to the class name and the namespace, we can filter the logs and read it better. Okay, here I have the field, I can create the logger. This dot logger is equal to logger factory dot create log of startup. Now we can use the logger. For example, here this dot logger dot log debug. This is my log information. If I run my application, and I refresh, I can't see it here, but here is the same. My information is missing. Why? 
this is pretty simple because out of the box the, the log the minimum log level is set to information because I'm logging here as the bug debug I can't see it if I change it to log information my log this is my log information and it's working the same should be here it's logging very well but if I don't want to change here my log log the debug for example I can change the minimum log level log level minimum debug I can run my application again or refresh and it's still working same here but not here as you can see because I specified the minimum log level just for the console so it's working well this is pretty enough for the logger another information that we have for example if dot logger dot is enable log level dot debug I can do something for example if I have a complex operation before to log information and I have to execute this calculation only if the log is enabled this is a good way to do that but before to go it's important to see how to use the logger in another class that is not the startup class okay for example let's go to create our user repository for example user repos repository okay and here we have public void do something that's doing nothing okay let's suppose I want to add some log here I need the logger here right exactly like in the startup class private read only I logger user repository and public user repository what I need here I don't need the logger factory as we did here it's enough to ask the logger okay this dot logger dot log oops is equal to logger and here I can write this dot log log information hi hi I come from a service okay but how can I use here the, the, the user repository a good way could be here yeah, new user repository but I need to create the logger each time I need the user repository this is pretty boring there is a better way to do that for example asking to the dependence injection to create the instance for me Let's do that. I need user repository, user repository. Okay, and here I can do something like user repository, let's do something. Okay, if I run the application, it's not working. Okay. Basically, it's not working because the ASP.NET Core is saying I can't resolve a user repository that you asked me okay because I asked to, to send me an instance of user repository but before to ask we need to specify how to create it for example is enough to go on configure service and strike some of the services dot add singleton of user repository singleton means that will be created just one in, in one instance for the application if we ask 10 times for the same for the user repository instance always the same instance will be returned so if I run my application again close here close here refresh hi I come from a service as you can see is working okay guys that's enough for logging see you in the next episode
Thanks for watching Logging Information in ASP.NET Core, presented by Uga Latanzi and Syncfusion. Head to syncfusion.com to get free ebooks on .NET Core and other development topics.